Um, I just want to get your thoughts on uh, what, what's next for you. Obviously, there's a lot of build-up for this fight. There was a lot on the line. Um, is, is it too early to look forward about what, what your goals are in the next sort of year or so? No, not at all. You know, um, the better man won tonight, and congratulations to him. All the best. Um, I still love what I do. I still love this. You know, I'm a fighter. I was born a fighter. I'll always be a fighter. And while there's a, a pulse and a beat in my heart, I'll still fight. I love doing this. Uh, yeah, I, I never get ahead of myself. F fighters, their careers are done and gone, you know. Their yesterday's news and it's all over. So, you know, I, I've never let that change me as a person or who I am. I'm just an average guy from Clitheroe, a small, class, small working class town, and just, just trying to get by in life. You know, but I left school at 16, like a lot of lads out there in the Northwest, particularly. Left school at 16, no idea where I was going to go. I was DJing a bit at the weekends. I was still, still, you know, dabbling with the mixed martial arts. I was trying to DJ, as I said. But then I came to a point where I was like, yeah, this, uh, you know, I was working hard all week. And then you pay your taxes, you get home, and there's nothing left, especially when you've got two kids. And that's what it was at the time. And I remember my boss at the time. He said, because we talk all day long, and he'd say, Michael, you're a smart kid. He said, is this what you want to do for the rest of your life? I said, no, no offense, I don't want to do it for another week. He says, well, give it some thought. So I said, okay, and I went away and I gave it some thought, and I kept coming back to fighting, because I did martial arts since I was eight years old. I've been a world champion at this and that, and I thought, the UFC is getting big. I get, you know, I fancy my chances. The Ultimate Fighter came about, and I remember watching it thinking, man, you know, th th this is cool, and I would love to be on there. Right. So he hit him with the right hand, dropped him, trying to finish the fight. It's now come down to this one defining moment. Man, oh! The King of Rock and Rumble, with an onslaught... Stage, I get, I, I get a message. Dana and Lorenzo want to see you. Dana and Lorenzo want to see me. I'm like, what do they want to see me for? And they just wanted to say, man, that was awesome, amazing, well done. And they handed me an envelope. And they went, open it, open it, you know. And inside there, there was a check. I think it was eighty thousand dollars. I'd never seen that type of money in my life. It brought a little tear to my eye, you know. It was amazing. But then I ran out, and Rebecca was sat in the stands by herself, and. I felt so sorry for her, you know, she'd come all this way and I sprinted up the stands and, you know, to share that with Rebecca. It was a, it was a good time. Michael was actually competing at light heavyweight. It was only when he got in there against Rashad and came up short that he decided to make the move to middleweight. That was the first time I tasted defeat. And you don't want to, as I say, make a habit of that. So I took a long look at the situation. And I'll never forget on the day when we, everybody makes way, he was sat in the sauna with his whole team with the, the sweatsuits on. Uh, he's trying to kill himself almost to make the weight. I was sat with these numpties that were training me at the time. Sat with these numpties in a Chinese restaurant eating noodles and drinking 7-Up, right? So... When I lost my first fight, I'm like, I'm not really making the sacrifices I could be making to be the best fighter I can be.
probably my, my toughest fight so far. I wouldn't describe him as a finisher. I don't see him throwing real heavy hands. I don't see him taking any risks. He's gonna lose. So, obviously, UFC 100 at the time, the biggest pay-per-view they've ever done. Still one of the biggest ever. Star-studded event. I'm taking on Dan Henderson at the culmination of Ultimate Fighter Team UK versus Team USA. By the way, when I look back at how I behaved in those days, I cringe. I'm like, oh, my God. Tune in to see the first time ever Dan Henderson's going to get knocked out. And I'll be honest, there was there were some dark times after that. That was my number one contender fight. I thought I was going to win it. I'd be fighting for the belt. Yeah, it's tough, you know. But the fact I was able to rebound from that, and I'm talking about myself, but you're asking me questions about myself, so... You know, people never, ever bounce back from, from knockouts like that, of that magnitude. I knew what people were saying about me. He's done. He's finished. I knew going into my next fight, UFC 105 against Dennis Kang in Manchester, there was a lot of pressure on me there. my feet up for the next week or two and uh, then after that back in the gym and uh, you know I, I want to be world champion Mike I talked so much shit to you on Twitter and you never blocked me and now I'm a fan you can kiss my ass Thanks set for UFC 127 alongside Jorge Rivera who faces Michael Bisping this Saturday night live on pay-per-view and Jorge man oh man do we have a lot of things to talk to you about you have been Mr. Viral Video uh, an onslaught of videos uh, sort of taking jabs at Michael Bisping and clearly you have gotten under his skin I just want to apologize for, for, for talking smack. A lot of people have been saying that I've been talking smack for this fight. And is that a character for me in there, right? And I apologize for that. But it's just that. Well! Don't do it, Jorge! Well! I mean it! Well! Have you ever met my friend Bisping? He's the biggest dick in the whole wide world. He's a mean old dick and he has. Oh, Count Bisping rode forth like a ship. He was not afraid to die, oh brave Count Bisping, he was not at all afraid to be subbed and nasty. Well, then I'm, I'm trying to behave accordingly, I'm a professional fighter, I'm not an idiot in the schoolyard making up silly rhymes and jokes and making stupid videos, you know, this is a, this is a press conference by the way, Jorge. This Joe Rogan annoyed me. 
saying, oh, come on, come and get some love. I was like, don't patronise me. I don't need their love. They want to boo, let them boo. Please don't make, stand here in front of me and beg everybody to cheer for me. You know, I don't want that. You know, if you want to boo, that's your right. Boo, go ahead. Boo me all day long. Yeah, no, I, no, I was actually there live at that event. It was in Anaheim, which, so it's just down the street from me. And I remember when I walked in, uh, and this was back in uh, the bad boy days, if you will, or when fucking everyone in America hated me. And I walked in and literally, because, you know, you don't want to get there too early because I'm not a fucking nerd. But I walked in, main car was just started, and 20,000 people all booed me in unison. All of them. And it was great. I looked... I could ask a question. Maybe I could ask three of Michael Bisping. First, what you gonna do when you know who? How you gonna deal with the Man of Steel? And how will you react to Sonnen's attack? Tune in on the 28th, 8 p.m. Eastern Time, and we will find out who the real world champion is. The guy who fights best wins, and I'm gonna fight the best. And he can keep his fake belt. He fights hard. I'm sure he's had a good camp. He's coming to uh, to knock me out. I've prepared accordingly. I've had a fantastic camp. I'm in the best shape of my life. That sounds like a cliche. Everybody always says it, but it's true. Um, and I'm better than I've ever been. My wrestling's better. My jiu-jitsu's far better. My boxing's better. I'm stronger. And I'm physically, sorry, sorry, mentally, mentally better than ever. So, you know. If I don't beat him Saturday night, I've got no one to blame but myself. Los Angeles, you said that when you uh, see Joseph Benavides, you will expletive strangle him. Uh, you are very close to him right now. I'm wondering, did we miss that or, or what's well, going on? Well, firstly, you're not asking me any questions. That's well, why I'm quiet okay. and I'm falling asleep over here. So come on, guys, step your game up. Secondly, the strangling that you're talking about has already taken place. Oh, wow. We have photographic evidence. On George of his phone, I, I strangled him. We've settled our differences. He's apologized. He's turned down a fight with my son. Um, <laughs> and um, we're good now. We're good. He's OK. He knows his place. <laughs> Everybody love you all. Thank you, guys. Oh, he brought the sport into disrepute. Do I, I, my ass wasn't a pin cushion for the last 10 years. I wasn't using steroids. Who's bringing the sport into disrepute? Do you think that's a problem in our sport? A massive problem. How so? I don't take steroids ever in my life. I know a lot of people do. So there's the problem. Testosterone replacement therapy. What do you think of that? I think it's absolutely 
Yeah. You got a guy who's 37 years old. Much but smarter. Who's also hopped up on applesauce and throwing fucking wheel kicks at people. And there's just a different, he was a different animal oh. because he had so much knowledge behind him, but his body was moving like a young man's body. He's doing straight testosterone. <clears throat> He's not, I mean, when he was on, see, think about this, right? We know for sure, we all know, absolutely 100% that people have cheated and taken steroids and got away with it. Michael Bisping has a fight years ago with Vitor Belfort. So somewhere in that fight, Vitor Bisping hurts his eye. I think he gets punched right in the eye. It's a very long time ago. And he had eye problems ever since. When I detached my retina, um, they did what's called a scleral buckle. Uh, and if you, if you, if you watch the surgery it's absolutely disgusting i mean i was able to pass the test to pass to be able to clear by a commission to fight you got to have 2200 vision which i was able to scrape by with the skin of my teeth wow you know so and my doctor was always amazed that, that i could still see to that amount if i if i squinted in the right direction and i turned here and the light was just right i could just about make out 2200 trt belt <laughs> TRT Vitor Belfort forever. Yeah. I mean, on there, I was trying to get a rise out of him and he kept putting his hand in my face. I'm not a religious guy and, and you know, God bless anyone that is, you know, I, I mean that, I respect everyone's opinions, but I'm not. And as we know, Vitor is heavily religious and he kept sticking his thing in my face. He was pissing me off. So I said, Vitor, come here, come here. And he leans in. I said, there is no Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe there is. Uh, maybe there is, you know, me getting uh, dropped with a head kick in the second round. <laughs> maybe that was God thwarting me. Who knows? What did he say? Some fucking Portuguese bullshit. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> sit there at nights and get drunk and watch my old fights. I've never done that once. But if I ever do see some old fights back, which occasion just happens by chance, you know, I, afterwards, I'm always calling for a shot at the belt or whatever. I, I said to my wife, I said, what the fuck was this guy thinking? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> He's out of his mind, you know, absolutely out of his mind. But at that time, it, it, quitting and trying to not become the champion did not even occur to me for a split second. <laughs> right now it's no problem he needs to focus on having a fight with his tattoo artist and leave me alone it took me a long time to find the right coach i think to myself this guy could be champion we just have to get this thing right it's such an emotional roller coaster as a fighter and jason's been there jason was an undefeated boxer you know and he understands what we go through mentally and how to handle that how to handle these emotions
something about me. I think he has the hearts for me, to be honest. Lou Rocco, you called me out. If you want to do it, let's dance. Here I am. A three to one favorite here. You seem increasingly confident that you're going to be able to get him out of there in less than five minutes. Why are you so confident that you're the much better mixed martial artist right now, present day? Because I am. And he had a, you know, a very frustrating, and I, I, I would imagine if he was honest, an embarrassing loss to um, to Luke nice. Rocco. He seemed to be so concerned with other things going on around him that he didn't give Rocco his full attention. And that was the first time I saw a question in his eyes. It was the first time he looked like maybe I'm not going to make it. The try. But I kind of, in some ways, resigned myself to the fact that, all right, maybe I'm not going to be the champion, but I still love doing what I do. Still love, you know, I'm a martial yeah. artist. I love to fight, I get paid good money for it. And that's my life, that's my job, you know? So I was still happy doing that. Of course, I'd never given up on it. But yeah, there was a part of me that thought, oh, well, you know, I'm towards the end of my yeah. career. Maybe it's never going to happen. It felt like, uh... the, question, the question I want to ask was, um, how you got your nickname, The Count? Okay, uh, long story short, um, so my ancestor was actually a Polish count back in the day. In the, in the Middle Ages, I think around the 1300s, he played a part, uh, obviously my great, 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 great granddad, whatever. Uh, he played a part in a, in a battle and uh, for, um, you know, what he did and what he achieved because he helped win the war. They gave him the title of a count and a bunch of land and, uh, yeah, they were living a nice life until uh, the Germans invaded in World War II and then they lined all my family up against the wall, shot them all dead, and my granddad was the only one that made it out alive and came to England, had my dad, and uh, I grew up on a council estate. <laughs> cool. So thanks, Germany. <laughs>
Okay, you wanted to win that first one, you wanted to win the cage rage, you wanted to win the tough. You won all those fights, yes. all like the big ones, except for the big one now, right? Except for the number one contender fight. Exactly. That's the, that's the only one you haven't won. Yeah, sure. And now here we are again. No, I know, I know. It's it's uh, it's poetic. It's all the UFC, of course, back in London. You know, this is my home country and London's the nation's capital. The O2 Arena, in front of my home people, I was super excited. But it's a fight that I wanted for so long. It's a fight that I can, I think if I win this, you know, when I win this, uh, there's only two people in the UFC to ever beat him, me being one of them. Um, I think he puts me in line for a title shot. But when he stepped in yeah. there against Anderson Silva, like for me, that was when everything came together for Michael. Like at Kung Lee, I expected him to beat Kung Lee. I expect Michael Bisping to beat Kung Lee every time they fight. So I expected him to have a good performance in that fight. With Anderson Silva, there was a big question as to how Michael was going to deal with Anderson's skill, his fight IQ, his understanding of how to set traps, and and to you know to basically manipulate the way that people fight him. He's a household name in mixed martial arts and he has the title of the greatest of all time. And rightly so, he's, he's an amazing fighter. But make no mistake, I will take him out of his comfort zone. achievement and then as I'm watching the fight he's not out the knee lands the round ends he's got to cut here a cut here he's got to cut all over his place I just told him like I said listen we're winning this fight capital at the Ultra Arena sold out against Anderson Silva. It doesn't get any better than that. And the fight was a war. It was a back and forth battle. This been focusing very much on his own. in the sport i live in a beautiful house i've got a beautiful wife i've got amazing children life is blessed but i want this i'm hungry as hell and i want this more than anybody the injury bug strikes again this time it's Chris Weidman, who was out of the middleweight title fight against Luke Rockhold, originally set the headline UFC 199 June. Yeah, no, it was. I was filming Triple X in Toronto. I hadn't trained at all, and I got the call, and I'd wanted a title fight my entire life, you know, so I wasn't going to turn it down. But I went for a run, so, so as soon as I found out, I was like, oh, shit, 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 i got to get in shape. So I immediately went for a run. And as I was running, I was thinking, this is just typical. I've been filming a goddamn movie. I've been near a gym, MMA gym, for a while doing anything. 
I need to get somebody that's already beaten me, so I'm kind of destined to fail. This is so fucking typical. And then Jason got on the phone and, you know, he talked to me around big time, you know, he said a lot of very positive things. Jason's an amazing coach. He Absolutely. really is. He's incredible. He really is. You know, two weeks, I believe, will be uh, a positive thing for me. You know, I, I, I've talked about this a lot. I always overtrain, always overtrain. And the first couple of weeks of camp, I feel fantastic. You know, I'm throwing guys around, I'm powerful, and I feel good. And then as the camp progresses, eight weeks, I train so hard because it means so much to me. By the end of the camp, yes, my conditioning is good and things like that. But, you know, I've lost strength. You know, I've, I've gone from being confident to negative to confident to negative. There's all these mixed emotions, a roller coaster going up and down. There's no time for that, okay? I'm two weeks out, my weight is good, my conditioning is good. I'm gonna train like a madman for the next 10 days. I'll be there. I'm gonna go in confident, no injuries. UFC for over 10 years, okay? I fought the best in the world. I've had my ups and my downs, but you can't keep a good man down. I'm here. I do believe this is my destiny. Thank you all for being here. This guy, Luke Rockhold, I know is a great fighter, but I'll tell you this, there's not a single person in the world I would rather take the belt off than this smug <laughs> right here. Clean, no fight hard, you want to touch it down? Go ahead. No Good luck to both of you. A lot of people said it was never going to happen. I was a 10 to 1 underdog. Everybody wrote me off. Everybody. Nobody gave me a chance. But I never stopped believing myself. <laughs> 